So welcome back to the channel. I know the fair is sitting behind me and I know a lot of you are asking me what's happening with it. Are you doing anything to it, Aidan? Where are more episodes? I want more episodes. Yes, we get back to it very soon. I was just incredibly busy at work. Um, just so much going on and the weather isn't playing ball either and it's making life a little bit torturesome at the moment. But we will get back to it. We have a shed full of parts to go on to this. We're going to be working on it this weekend so we'll get an episode of that up very, very shortly. But today's video is based on something a little different. It's based on this trailer behind you. But before we start talking about it, let's see it in action. Our calves are just about to go out and we'll pick it up at the end of the video and we'll show you a little bit of a walk around of this trailer. And through Irish style, as soon as you go to put them up in the trailer, it pours. It's not giving a whole wet day, I don't think. I hope they not. It's not going to do them any harm. It would be better if they were going out for a few hours when it's dry, that they climatize a wee bit without getting wet. But in Ireland, you just you don't get it every way you want. It's mild enough, it's not cold anymore. Um, so they're going out now. It's time for them to go out. Girls are fed, fed up with cleaning sheds, aren't you? Well, not really. Just, I'm fed up cleaning them. Sorry, when you're at school during the week, I'm cleaning. The trailer's going great. As you can see, it's a very, very good trailer. I'm really, really happy with how good that trailer is inside. We do need to put a couple of things into it to fix a couple of things that's broken and really do need to be addressed. But we will be doing that now during this week, probably when we get a bit more time. But getting these calves out, it's the start of summer. It's the start of easing a bit of work. There's a cow to calve the day, the one calf last night. Um, but it's nice to be getting cattle out, get sheds kind of sorted a bit better. They're a bit of room. They're too big for being in these sheds. They're just constant cleaning and feeding and cleaning and feeding. I'll be glad to see them outside. Don't touch the electric fence. We're settling, starting to settle a little bit. Well, all is one, and it destroyed me good sheep wire. Jump through it. I'll fix it up after. As you can tell, it's very windy here as always. It's never any other way. 
we have them out. The crew is with us. Just not settled yet. We didn't do what we've done other years. We didn't let them have a run around the yard. Probably made a mistake not doing that. We just wanted to get it done early this morning. We didn't want to take the whole day about doing it because we've other jobs to do. So it's the following day. Um, I'm just going over here to drop over the tipsy bin, which is on the front, uh, over to the calves. Save me having to bring buckets back and forth. The tipsy bin will be very handy over here. It's great. You can just drop it over wherever the calves is in the field. And it's just a pleasure because nothing can get in at it, no wet can get into the mail. It holds about 700 kilos of nuts, which is going to do the calves a little while. And it saves me going back and forth bars. It's bars just, oh, there's no comparison. There's no comparison in the two. All right, so that's the calves fed. They're doing well ever since they got out. Small little area for them to go around for. So that's grand because I want them to eat meal. I don't want to give them much grass, although there's plenty of grass on that. It's layered with grass, but I want them to eat meal. Meal is the most important thing still to them. So we'll just close the door on the case here. She's going for surgery. The time has finally come to split her and put a clutch in her because we're just finished feeding now. Well, we're not totally done, but I can put in enough blocks that'll do me for a few days, it's going to be gone for two weeks, but I can do the rest with the Massey and leave a few blocks in the ground they can pick up with the box and leave sitting in place for the couple of dry cows that are still inside in the shed. The cows are going out tonight, so that's them out at night. Thank Christ for that, they're out at night. In the middle of May, who'd ever thought that cows would be still in at night? But our cows are, and that's the longest they've ever been in um, at night, ever, on our farm. But thankfully, we had silage, and thankfully they've done very, very well. It's just a little bit of extra work, that's all but it made no real difference to us. Cows are still milking well. They're out, they're happy. Grass is now growing, I'm happy. So it's all good. But the case is gonna have to get her clutch fitted. It's not doing her any harm. Uh, I've just been very easy the way I'm driving her, not abusing her, taking it nice and easy. But the one thing I have to say about the case, it doesn't let me down. It put in the whole silage of that pit and that clutch was slipping. If you remember videos back when I was opening the pit, that clutch was slipping before I even opened the pit in the winter time. And it still kept going. It still kept doing loads of work. Putting in the silage didn't do take any effect on that clutch. That clutch it was worn when I actually bought that tractor. Um, and I have that tractor now nearly five years. I knew there was a little bit of noise in the clutch. It wasn't that it was slipping. I could just hear that little noise when the pressure came on. I knew the clutch wasn't good on her. But I know when it gets to the stage that it has to be done. It just couldn't do without her over the winter time because that would have been a bit of a problem for me. I'd have to go and source another load of tractor to keep me going while this one was being fixed. And my man that fixes my tractor only does this in the evenings after his day job. Um, so I didn't want to be bothering him. He's up to his eyes and work. It's going hopefully next Monday and that'll be it gone for about two weeks. And I'm hoping that we'll have it back um, before silage is done. Um, but it'll be a good job to get done. It'll mechanically sort this tractor out. She's a great little machine. I just have to get someone in someday who knows about electronics and can do a good wiring job on this tractor. And I think I do know the man that's living beside me here now who could have a look at it and fix a heap of stuff for me on it. I might just leave it with him. Fix the lights properly, fix the heater and the air conditioning on it because they do work. There's a wiring just issue in there and I want him maybe to tie that all up and check everything out. Another thing to stop working on it as well is the dash. Electronic dash in these. I wish it didn't have electronic dash to be honest. I wish it was just a normal dash because electronics is always the things that let you down. But this dash uh, is not working now. The lights and all have went out on it. What happened first was it went to all zeros and nothing was registering. And then it went out completely. Um, so I'm gonna have to send that off. Uh, there's a place in England, I think it's called King's Electronics or something like that in, in, in England. And they fix these. I've often I've sent other parts off to them before and they come back relatively quickly enough. Sometimes you get a different one back, a reconditioned one or something like that, and they keep your old one to fix them. But that's going away. 
to get fixed because I've checked all the wire and I don't see any problems. One other thing I have to get is a new seat. I'll be putting a new seat in at the summertime. I'm not going to invest anything in that seat. It's as uncomfortable as you would ever come across. It might look all right in the video, but trust me, it's got a hump in the middle here and it would just divide you into like riding a horse barebacked. The loader is going to have to come back off again. Yeah, he's not going to like doing that. He's going to be renting me out of it, and rightly so, but it's going to have to come off. It's not that big a job to actually hook the loader off. It only takes a couple of minutes to hook the loader off. It's just some of the brackets will have to come off. Maybe not them all. She might just slide out. Um, he's going to have a look at that and see. I'm going to go up and help him if he needs me um, to take off some of them bits and pieces just to give him a lift off of stuff. Lowe's used to talk to me about a set of forks for the front of this tractor. I did get a set of forks back a while ago. I never actually showed them. Simple farmhand. Uh, forks they are. I'll show them later on in the video, but um, the shear grab to lift on bags of fertilizer on, that's not a good job. It's hard on the pins and even to put big bags of fertilizer on them, it's hard on them as well. So I needed a set of forks. I really did need a set of forks because I'm using this front loader more and more now. Front loaders are, a, they're just a godsend. That's what they are. They're an absolute godsend and I didn't realize it until I got this one because I can hook on so much stuff so quickly. It's just brilliant, brilliant to have. Um, and that's why I'm going to miss it when it's away two weeks. I'm going to miss the tractor There's so many jobs I still have to do and she is going to be a miss in the yard So I'm looking forward to getting her back. This is a 12 foot Nugent as you probably know by now a very popular trailer You see a lot of them about and um, this trailer actually was a trade-in that came from a guy that was buying a new trailer There's a grant on the moment in Northern Ireland and uh, not here But it's in Northern Ireland there's a grant where you can buy a new trailer and a lot of new trailers are getting traded in now, very fresh trailers. And this one just literally came in. Actually, two of them came in together from the same farmer, both in the same condition. One of them was sold within two hours. This one was only in a few hours, and I laid my eyes on it. And in the corner of the yard, I walked over to it, had a quick look around it, I talked to Evan, and it just felt right. It felt like it was the trailer for me. I had a good look around it, and everything about it was perfect. And lo and behold, yeah. Went to buy a set of pallet forks and came home with the pallet forks and the trailer. It happens, but I'm glad I did. I'm glad I was there that day. I'm glad that I got this trailer and nobody else because it is a phenomenally good trailer. Look, sorry about the wind. As always, very windy up here. I hope you can hear me. So let's have a little look at what we bought. So, as you can see, most users know the Nugent trailer. Um, they're well built. As you can see, I have a Nugent I bought brand new back a few years ago in a flat trailer and absolutely love that trailer. It's so easy pulled behind the Jeep um, and I can't say a bad word about it. So I knew the build quality was going to be there. This trailer itself has seen very, very little use. You can tell by looking at the tires. The tires have next to no air on them whatsoever. A spare tire on the far side was never put on. We will change these lights out for LED. They are notorious for letting water in. I don't like them old style lights anymore. LED is the way to go. So I will be changing them lights out for LED. So I will contact my man in Auto Sparky and order a few lights myself online on his store when I can get his recommendations of what I should put on this place. But we will be changing them lights. They're a simple enough thing. But the trailer itself is very, very straight. No dints, cracks, anything at all on it. It's as good as the day it left the showroom. Yes, it might be a bit duller. All trailers are getting like that very, very quickly. I also like the fact now they can step up here and look in at the cattle. Um, my own, you couldn't do that on the Eiffel Williams. Now underneath the trailer as well is very clean. The timbers and all are perfect in it. We're gonna have a little look at it inside um, in a minute. But I do like this. Now, one big fault I had with my Eiffel Williams trailer was the Jeep I have, you all know I have an L200. I've always had an L200. I've had three of them now at this stage. And I always found that the Eiffel Williams trailer was a hard trailer to pull. It was a 10 foot and I always knew I had it on the back, put it that way. I always knew. And even when we put two or three heavy cows in it, hard, hard trailer to pull. I thought maybe as the Jeep was on the powered, but then I got the lend of a Nugent trailer quite often actually. Um, and it was the same size as this one here and the difference was night and day. I don't know why, whatever way it is balanced or whatever way it's made, it is so much easier to pull. I wasn't actually looking at any other brands. It was always a Nugent I had in my mind. The Eiffel Williams is a good trailer, well made. Mine was the older type. Some people seem to think the older type was better made than the new ones. I don't know. I haven't even seen the new ones, but I know it was well built. But the Nugent is just, I think it's in a class of its own inside when you open these two doors so this is one thing i do love about this trailer that frame 
Do you see that frame that runs the whole way around the trailer? That goes right around and that just rigids up the whole trailer. That gives it an awful lot of extra strength. Just having that the whole way around. So I do think the finish inside the trailer itself is a lot better. Mine had the sheep openings in the bottom. This one doesn't have that. It just has them on the top. That's all you need for cattle. So we'll have a look inside and see what it's like. So now we're inside the trailer. You can see how clean the trailer is inside. The roof and all, perfect. It's just in immaculate condition inside. A um, couple of things I did was I fitted one of these little stoppers that holds this door. So that little stopper pins again there, like that. So now we have a full size trailer. I also think it's a little higher than Ava Williams, I may be wrong, but I'm six foot one. I've got a little bit of clearance there, and I don't think I had that. I think I had to kind of crouch a little bit when I was in the other trailer. This trailer, no tank. Um, if I was buying a new trailer, I wouldn't put a tank in it either. Um, I don't need it. I'm not drawing cattle any long distances. I'm not going to be drawing for other people to the mart or anything like that. Don't really need it. The amount of time the cattle would be in the trailer would be short. So I had no real need for a tank to be in it. Um, you know, if it had a came with a tank, yeah, of course, brilliant. But if it was ordering one new, I wouldn't. It wouldn't be something that I'd pay extra for. Now these here I much prefer compared to the clips that I had on Ava Williams. Um, they pull the door much tighter. What I had before was just the clips. You know, you see them in several trailers there. And the problem I had with them is very rattly. A very, very noisy trailer on the road. I had a bit of age to it. There's no doubt about it. I'd say the trailer I had was probably anything between 25 and 30 years old. Um, so it owes me nothing. It was a very, very good trailer Ava Williams. I couldn't say really much wrong with it, apart from the fact it was a little bit harder to pull. But I just wanted something fresh. Now the Ava Williams that I had was a good trailer. I had done a bit of work to it. About five years ago, I put a brand new full floor in it. So I put the t new timbers and I put an all-in-one checker paid floor, the proper floor for that trailer. I got it through Lakeland Machinery. We'd put LED lights in it. We'd done quite a bit of work. I'd done the brakes all around it as well. I think I mentioned that before on the channel and I've made a great job of that trailer. So it was in good condition. So whoever gets it was gonna get a good trailer. It's in their yard there now. And um, one thing it did need is it needed a complete new hitch. Um, the hitch on mine, as you can see that there, there's no movement, apart from the handle, there's no movement. Mine had a lot of movement here. So this whole thing needed to be replaced. This needed to be replaced on mine as well. The handbrake needed to be replaced. All that needed to be redone. So there was going to be a little bit of money having to be spent on it to leave it safer, let's say, on the road. So it'll go on to some other home and it'll serve someone for a long time yet. But I can even see on this trailer, it's a lot higher than the Ava Williams was. It's a bigger trailer all round. But this gap here at the top, some of them have them on the sides as well. That is going to be great. And we all know what that's great for, not just letting air into the cattle drag when i found with ava williams it didn't have this the new ones probably do and one thing i had was a lot of resistance on the road when i was driving so that was adding to the fact that the trailer was hard to pull because the wind couldn't get through you just had literally a big sheet behind you of resistance this trailer went straight to walk after i bought it i done a run for a guy about 20 miles and um, back and forth i found a massive massive difference in pulling the two trailers it was just a pleasure to have behind and you wouldn't hear it that's another thing you could forget nearly the trailer was on behind you and um, there wasn't a noise kind of it and that that was a nice thing a nice thing not to have a trailer rattling like mad behind you but i'm very happy with it i'm very happy with my purchase um nugent is known for making good stuff so it's going to be here hopefully for another 20 plus years if it's half as reliable as the last one was it's going to be a good purchase so i was glad very glad to get my hands on that merch a lot of people messaged me about merch out of stock i know a lot of our merch is out of stock and thanks to you guys for that um just orders were overwhelming for us but we have news our merch is going to be back in stock next week so our jackets that we have our ifarm we farm jackets and um, they're going to be back in stock very early next week and our body warmers that a lot of you are really interested are going to be back in stock on the 6th of june in around the 6th of june so we'll be giving updates on that very very shortly another thing we're working on at the moment is to put a little package together for father's day we will be doing a nice little package for father's day coming up and um, if you guys want to grab yourself a deal for that so keep an eye out for that and that'll be coming very very shortly anyway folks thanks for watching today's video if you like what you see hit that sub button give us a like leave a comment down below until the next one talk to you again